friends, Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. In today's video, we are going to go over some fun hands-on activities that you can do to teach some life science skills to preschool or kindergarten students. Now, I have been working this summer on trying to prepare for the new school year. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am a mom of eight sons. We homeschool. And so that is what I'm preparing for for this school year. And then I'm also a previous school teacher. So I have all the activities ready to show you guys on these trays and I'm excited to get right into it so that you guys can maybe use these activities with your students as well. Okay, this first activity I'm going to show you is parts of a plant. So you are teaching the student some basic parts of a plant. They're going to learn roots, stem, leaf, and blossom. All right, so pretty much what they're going to do is there are cards with the vocabulary words on them and then there is this giant flower that the students are going to put together so what i did and some of my pieces are already bent because my little guy was like they were fighting over them so <laughs> my two-year-old bent a few of the pieces <laughs> but what your students are going to do is put the flower together first. So have them basically just give them the pieces like a puzzle almost and have them play around and put the pieces together. Um, this is the one that's bent. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you know, and then talk about the names of the pieces as they're doing it. So you can say, okay, this is the stem of the flower. This is the blossom of the flower. These are the leaves. Oops and kind of, you know, help them know where it goes, you know, help them put it where it goes. They will probably know where the flower part goes, you know, how to put the stem down, probably even how to put the leaves down, but they may not know the roots. So my three-year-old, because, <clears throat> you know, if you're working with preschoolers, kindergartners probably will know, but preschoolers, um, he didn't know what these were. So he's like, mommy, what is this? You know, so I had to tell him, those are the roots and they go under the ground. So they go right here. And then we kind of talked about how the roots get all the nutrients and the, the water from the ground. And then the water goes up and the nutrients go up and the flower eats. That's how they eat. They eat from their roots. It goes into the flower and helps it grow. <clears throat> so have them put the pieces together. And then you're going to talk about the vocabulary words and then they are going to match them up. So you're going to say blossom. Blossom is the part with the pretty flower part that you like so much. Blossoms, okay, that has the petals. Okay, this is a blossom. And then leaf, you know, have them find the leaves. There's three leaves on here so they can label it, you know, next to this one, leaf, and have them put the labels on their plant, okay? So this is your stem, this says stem, and then here are your roots, okay? So that is the first activity, and I'm gonna put a clip in here of some of my little guys working on this activity because we've already done it once. We're going to do it again this school year, but we did it once because as I'm creating these activities, my kids see them and then they want to do them. So why not? It doesn't matter that it's summer. We can learn at any time of school year. It does, or any time of the year. It doesn't have to be the school year. And so, yeah, we were, we were having fun with this and I'm going to, again, obviously do this during the school year. So you'll see it in another video, I'm sure. But we had a little bit of fun the other day um, doing this activity. So I will put that clip in the video right now. By the way, just to kind of show you, um, what I do with the labels for these activities is I print them out on label paper. So this is just a direction page that comes with the activity. I print it out on label paper and then I put it on the bag where I put the activity. So you can do it any way you want. You don't have to print it on label paper. You could just print it on regular paper and then stick it inside the bag or however you want to do it. But there is a direction page that kind of helps you. So if you take this activity out in like three years, and you can't remember how to do it. <laughs> it's got the directions, although this activity is pretty self-explanatory. So, um, but anyways, let's go on to the next activity. This 
activity is called Animal Kinds. Now I showed this activity briefly in a previous video which I will link below in the description box and in that video I show you how you can use this activity with a tray and the students can sort out the pictures with a tray. But in this video I'm going to show you another way you can do this activity and this way is using Play-Doh. So I have five uh, little containers of Play-Doh here. <clears throat> And I have attached the animal pictures to these sticks. So these are craft sticks. And all I do is I'm, so I'm going to put each one in a Play-Doh container. And then I am going to take the cards. So what the children are going to do is they are going to sort the cards by animal kinds. So what you are teaching the children is how to, first of all, discriminate between the different kinds of animals, how to group them, that as scientists group animals by their kind, okay? So we want to teach them that, so they're categorizing, and then they're also able to discriminate and they're able to sort. <clears throat> so basically, I'm going to look at this picture, and this is a fish, so it is part of the fish kind. This is a dog, so it is part of the dog kind. And even though this dog does not look exactly like this dog, he's still part of the dog kind. So that is what you are trying to teach the children, is that scientists <clears throat> separate our animals or our creatures by their kind. Okay, So this is also a dog, even though he's not the same exact type of dog, he is still in the dog family. Okay. So we're going to separate the frogs here, and this is how they're going to sort. They're just going to sort by placing the cards in front of the correct category, okay? <clears throat> now some of these are not mixed up yet, so penguin is a bird, and owl is a bird, it's part of the bird family. So basically it's just a sorting activity, and you can, again, check out that other video if you want to see another way that the kids can sort. Okay, let's go on to the next activity. Okay, so we are matching up the parent to the baby in this activity. And I think this is a really good activity to introduce to our young kids because it has, it's a way to introduce them to a lot of the names of baby animals because a lot of us, even as adults, don't know what certain animals are called as babies. Okay, so basically it's just a simple puzzle match. <clears throat> so here is sheep and lamb. We have bear and cub. Now, of course, knowing me, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm going to try to make this a little bit more exciting than just matching up puzzles. Even though this is a perfectly good critical thinking skill, matching up the puzzles and getting the names of the adult to the baby, um, I love to... <clears throat> make the activities go a little bit further. So what I have here is just a pack of magnetic animals. And I thought it might be fun that if we come across an animal that's in here, the children can match it up to the picture. Now, I have another set of animal magnets that I might pull out as well because not, you know, I don't have a lot of the matching pictures in here, but <clears throat> I have some. So what I mean by this is if the children, let's say they match up horse and foe, then they can grab the magnet and say, hey, this is a horse that matches horse. So they can kind of match up the magnet to the animal as well. So it's just another step. Now, I don't have a lot of them in here, but like I definitely see that I have cat and kitten. And the cool thing is, when they match up cat and kitten, I see that in this picture it kind of looks like this might be a mom cat, and that might be a baby jumping on her. I don't know. But we could pretend, right? And so we have cat and kitten here, and so we can kind of match it up that way. So it's just another step to make it a little bit more fun, is to maybe add in some animal magnets to this activity. But if you don't have those, it is so perfectly fine to just use the puzzles and have them match it up. Now, with really young kids, like preschoolers, I'm going to read the names of the adult and of the um, baby, 
and hopefully <clears throat> they'll be able to repeat the names to me and start making some connections. So for example, we have pig and piglet. We have frog and tadpole. This would be a really great one to talk about with your kids. Um, well, this baby doesn't look anything like its parent. And then you can kind of talk a little bit about the frog life cycle. And you could even use that as a starting point to um, start maybe a unit on animal life cycles. And you could do frogs, you could do butterflies, you could do chickens, <clears throat> stuff like that. So, um, and I do plan on making some activities for animal life cycles. So be on the lookout for that in the future. But yeah, so we have you know, rabbit and kit and lion and cub. Okay, so there's just a handful of them in here and it just is a great talking point with our young kids to just get them exposed to the animal kingdom and to the names that we call animals. Okay, now we are going into some plant activity books. So these are going to talk to the children about how flowers grow and the needs of a plant, okay? So I have two books here. I'll show you this one first. This is How Flowers Grow. And I have laminated all the pages and then I attached book rings to make it into a book. If you're looking for the book rings, they're in my Amazon affiliate store. I'll leave the link below so you can find the ones that I always buy. <clears throat> and then um, I also attached all the pictures with Velcro. So basically what I do is take all the, sorry, it's loud, uh, take all the pictures off <clears throat> and then as the children read, they have to find the picture that matches what they're reading. So how flowers grow. Now I did this activity with some of my preschoolers the other day because of course, after you, after I create the activities, they want to do them right away. So we're going to, of course, do it again during the school year, but we did it the other day. So I will insert um, a video of them doing this activity in a minute, but let me just kind of explain it to you. So what they are going, or what they did is I read the book to them. So I said, how flowers grow, and then I would read the pages. I plant seeds. So the first thing is you have to plant the seeds and they have to find the picture and they attach it. Now I have Velcro dots on here to attach each picture to the page. So if you're looking for Velcro dots, I'll also link those, uh, the ones that I buy on Amazon, uh, in my Amazon store, but you can buy them anywhere at any craft store. <clears throat> okay, so then the flowers sprout. So then they have to find the picture of the sprouts and they put it on. What next? What happens next? The flowers grow buds. And then the flowers bloom. These are the blossoms. Okay, and then the last page just goes through it again. So you can repeat seeds first, plant the seeds, then the sprouts grow, then there's buds, and then there's blossoms, okay? Now, reminding them that we can help them grow by watering our flowers, right? <clears throat> okay, so. Then the other book is Plant Needs. What does a plant need to grow? Okay, so let me take these off. Okay, so let's go through this. A plant needs sun, and they're gonna put the sun down. A plant needs soil. A plant needs water. Plants can grow. So they need sun, soil, and water. Then they can grow, okay? So there you go. Simple but fun, especially since they get to um, take the pictures on and off. That was a real hit with my kids.
Okay, this last activity that I have to show you today is called living or non-living. So they are going to sort the circle cards either on this sorting mat or you can um, do it on a pocket chart if you have one available. So let me get the pieces out. <clears throat> And they're going to go through and they're going to sort what is living and what is not living. Okay, so you may want to read your kids a, a book about living and non-living things uh, before you do this, this activity. I love to bring in literature, so I'm going to be bringing in a lot of science books this school year before we kind of get real involved in these activities. And I will try to share that with you as um, we do it throughout the school year. So... Be sure to be subscribed to my channel so you can see all those videos and I can kind of um, share with you what we're doing and then you can change it up for what you're doing. Um, I can share with you some books that we're using in case you want to get the same books, that kind of thing. All right, so this is uh, living and non-living. So they are going to sort living, a mouse, not living, a hat, living, a tree, not living, glasses. You get the idea, right? So they will fill in this mat okay but if you have a pocket chart <clears throat> you can then sort with the pocket chart so this activity also comes with some pocket chart headers and let me get you so you can see it okay so these are the pocket chart headers i'm gonna just yeah i'm not gonna put it way up higher you won't see it okay so living not living this is a pocket chart um it's like one of those pocket charts that you can stand up on a table Okay, can you see that? I will try to have one of these linked in my Amazon store uh, below. So um, in case you're, you're looking for something like this. But we have living and not living. <clears throat> so they would just sort again. So we have um, not living pencil. We have living a frog. Okay, so you can just have them sort on a pocket chart as well. Okay, so we do have, let's see, buggy bee, and we have a flower. All right, you get the idea. So you can sort living, and you can sort not living over here. <clears throat> so, okay. So there's just a handful of other pictures here, and you can continue on. So that is the last activity I think that I have to show you. I will be working on more of these activities, of course, and adding them to um, my website. I will leave any links to anything that I have talked about in this video in the description box. I love hearing your comments, so please leave me a comment if you have one. Of course, all comments um, are, they go through a review before they get posted. So I review them and then if it's a decent comment, I will uh, post it. So if you don't see your comment right away, don't freak out. It's just because um, it has to be reviewed first because I get way too much spam uh, in the comments. So I review them and then I post them. But I still love hearing from you guys, so don't forget to leave me a comment. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.